When the grid goes off, your solar system's going down too. At least most of them are. That is, unless you choose the right setup and add a few critical upgrades to keep it running. The thing is, no one talks about the extra gear and the extra costs you'll need if you actually want to keep your lights, fridge, freezer, and water pump on during a blackout. So today I'm breaking down the hidden costs of solar power and showing you what it really takes to keep your lights on when the grid goes off. And stick around because I'll share the real numbers of what our completely off-grid solar system cost. The Ready Light, into the country. Hey, I'm Nick and welcome to The Ready Life. We've lived off-grid for 25 years and helped thousands learn how to break free from the power grid and other systems that control our basic necessities like water, food, and heat. Let's uncover what solar companies aren't telling you. Most people think solar panels mean instant energy independence, but here's the truth. Without batteries, your panels won't power your home when the grid fails. And that's because most grid-tied systems have a built-in safety called anti-islanding. It prevents electricity from backfeeding to the grid and protects linemen who are trying to restore your power. It's a life-saving feature, but it means your panels shut down during an outage unless you've planned ahead with special equipment like a battery bank that enables you to safely keep your power on without sending power backwards towards the grid. And beyond the anti-islanding problem, what about nighttime or cloudy days? This is where batteries come in. They store energy so you can run essentials like lights, fridge, freezer, or your water pump after sunset and on cloudy days. But here's the thing, powerful battery banks aren't cheap. The average American home burns through about 30 kilowatt hours per day. That's a lot of power. We focused on energy efficiency first, and that allows our 30 kilowatt hour lithium battery bank to carry us for several days, even in bad weather. The cost? We went with a quality battery called Midnight Power PowerFlow. And because it's quite reasonably priced for what you're getting, the cost was only a fraction of what many others would be, around seven or 8,000 for the whole thing. And modern lithium batteries have excellent longevity. With a quality battery like this, you can expect 15 years at a minimum with 20 years possible if they're treated right. But here's the kicker. Batteries alone aren't enough to keep your home powered during a blackout. You also need the right inverter. Otherwise, your batteries are just an expensive backup you can't access. Let's talk about why. Inverters convert the DC power from your batteries and solar panels into AC power your home can actually use, but not all inverters are created equal. The problem is most modern systems use micro-inverters, which are small devices installed on each solar panel. They're efficient for grid-tied setups, but totally useless when the grid goes down. To get real blackout protection, you need a hybrid inverter. This type manages solar, battery, and grid power seamlessly. It ensures your home stays safe and powered during an outage. We use the Midnight Power All-in-One, and it's a workhorse. Handles up to 15 kilowatts of solar, connects to large battery banks, and it even works with fuel-powered generators for backup charging. The price tag is around five or 6,000, and unlike old systems that required multiple expensive components, this really does have it all. Do you need more than one of these? Well, it depends. If you're trying to power a conventional home with big loads like an HVAC system or electric water heaters, you're going to need more than one and a really big battery bank. But if you set up a critical load subpanel where only your essentials are powered like water, pump, fridge and freezer, lights, etc., then one may be enough for you. Unless you're willing to become energy efficient like we did, using a critical load subpanel can save you thousands and simplify your system as long as you size it properly. Sizing your system isn't about guessing from your power bill. It depends on your critical loads, your habits, and even local weather. And that's why we created free class, what you can do now to start going off the grid. It walks you through real world scenarios and gives you a three-step plan for preparing your home. You'll also learn how to avoid the most expensive mistakes most people make. So visit thereadylife.com forward slash now or click the link in the description to grab your spot. But there's something you got to know. Even with the right inverter, there's one more cost that people rarely consider and it can make or break your solar setup. Solar panels need a place to live. Roof racks are the cheapest option, but personally, they're my last resort. For instance, your roof isn't usually pointing the right direction at the right pitch. Up north, snow can build up, block your power, even damage them. And if you ever need to re-roof your home, yeah, <laughs> have fun. So we went with MT Solar pole mounts. Ours cost three to four thousand dollars. 
They have some real advantages, such as easy seasonal pitch adjustment for maximum solar performance, easy access for cleaning and maintenance, and no roof penetrations. It's a buy once, cry once kind of situation. Now let's talk about the little costs that sneak up on you, such as long wire runs to your inverter, heavy gauge cables for high current in between the inverter and the batteries, surge protection devices like these Midnight Solar SPDs, which are my favorites. You'll need at least three of those to cover your bare bones basics, unless you're paranoid like me and end up using five or six to cover everything. But all these extras can easily tack on another thousand or two thousand. So what's the total damage for this? Well, let's crunch the numbers. Here's our breakdown. For batteries, inverter, and miscellaneous parts and wiring, somewhere around 15,000. Replacing our solar array, say 2,000. It would actually be less, but I'd like to see you put up a bigger one than we have. The MT solar pull mount, three to 4,000. For a grand total of roughly 20,000 for a system that keeps our home running fully off-grid. And that's complete energy independence for the price of a new low-cost economy car. Spread over the expected 20-year lifespan, it's about $83 a month. Compare that to the average U.S. power bill of $140 a month, and the system could pay for itself in 12 years. But honestly, even if it never pays off, the peace of mind is worth every penny. So if you're ready to reclaim your independence from the power company, don't miss our free class, What You Can Do Now to Start Going Off the Grid. Go to thereadylife.com forward slash now or click on the link in the description. You'll get a three-step action plan that helps you avoid costly mistakes. And that's thereadylife.com forward slash now. And while you're at it, here's a video I think you're going to really like.